Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is a rice news analyst, Emmanuel Ifeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Ifeni. Tundu. Let's start straight away with these day newspapers. The lead story, federal government restricts children from churches, mosques, limit service to one hour, deploys general expert machines to Kogi Cross River State. Worship centers remain closed in Lagos, Kaduna. 812 health workers infected with COVID-19. Nigeria resumes participation in World Health Organization's clinical trials. Virus infects 241 more, bringing total to 10,819 with 314 deaths. 3,239 discharged. Well, let's see how other newspapers are reporting the advisory on the reopening of churches and mosques. Now, the Guardian newspaper, Lagos Oshu, Quara retained ban on religious centers. Task Force issues more guidelines encouraging, encourages worship at home. Then, of course, uh, the Nation newspaper, Government, if you are 55 and above, avoid mosque churches. PTF issues advisory to states on return of services, prayers. Worship centers stay short, say Lagos, Oyo, Quara, Kaduna. And of course, uh, the New Telegraph. Confusion trails guidelines on churches, mosques reopening. Lagos government, religious leaders, differ on protocols. Aero 5, federal government can't ease lockdown. It didn't impose. PTF releases rules, insist. It's better to worship at home. NCDC, 812 doctors, nurses contracted COVID-19. Then, of course, the, the Daily Sun. As federal government releases guidelines for worship centers, reopening, Attendance register, must for churches, mosque, running water, sanitizers at entry, entry, exit points, no social gathering after service, Lagos differ, insist on closure. Now, quite a mouthful there, but these guidelines are necessary and must be enforced for these religious centers to be reopened. That is the minimum we expect right now. Of course, Lagos yet to reopen because there are no agreements between some religious leaders and the government on how to enforce these guidelines. Yes, it's not something that is too much for anybody to say you cannot be praying and counting your congregation. I think that is unacceptable because there must be other officials of that worship center that should take the responsibility of ensuring that you don't have more than the necessary number at any given time. Oh, no, I think it's it. okay. If you don't have those officials, then you close. Yes. It's very simple. So, and in any case, if any, in Lagos, the reference was to mosques. Yes. When we were told that the imam leading the prayer would not be able to uh, check the number of people. But, the protocol in mosques, I guess, is different from the protocol in churches. I don't think in mosques they have uh, uh, wardens, you know, all these assistants uh, who no. go up and down and count people because everybody will be praying. So when you say, you know, they should have other officials. You do so this if before stands, you start praying. Yeah, if somebody stands, you do the entrance, needful, the right thing. Yeah. Follow the protocol before you start praying. No, and if you Not that you do start that, praying you and you don't care what is happening. No, no, they're two but, different things. Yeah, the no. imam is not going to be the one taking True. the head count. There needs to be somebody responsible for to that. To take that responsibility. And if they insist that there can be nobody to do it, then they don't have the rights open. Yeah, but if somebody joins uh, the prayer or wants to come to the mosque, uh, uh, will you turn people in? Yes, you have to. You ask them to go? Because yes, there has they to have be to. Re if they limited don't, if they don't number time, at any yeah, given time. They have to time. be turned back. There has to be limited number at yes. any given time. In any case, the state governors, according to the uh, presidential task force, have the responsibility for enforcement. That was made clear. But there were some other details that came out of that press briefing or 
the stories that you have read out. The first is the Minister of Health pointing out that persons that are above the age of 50 constitute about 75. 75. Okay, yeah. Is okay. it 55 or 50? 50. You know, okay, 55 is that, the ones that were uh, advised to stay at home. From people that are home. above the 50 or they are 50 plus uh, constitute about 17 percent of the cases that have been seen in Nigeria. And then persons who are 60 plus uh, constitute about 18 percent. And they made the point that if you are within this age bracket and you come down with uh, COVID-19, the chance that, uh, you know, you could die is uh, very high. And I think that is very frightening. So uh, if any, you know, this is relevant information for you. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> Tudor is uh, he's still in the same zone. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, Ruben, nominal Christians like you, we choose oh, where you go to church. Oh, we, How do you we, know that? We, we, we emphasize that, well, I'm above 55 and sit at home and do other things. But some of us who are above 55, we go to church with faith, with faith <laughs> okay. and keep distance, maintain all the protocols, <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you take responsibility <laughs> for your own life. Yes. And then the other issue was about, uh, you know, the uh, minister also pointing out that Nigeria is now rejoining the WHO uh, solidarity trials. trials. I mean, I, I don't understand what they mean by that, because I don't remember at any point Nigeria saying they were pulling out. What was announced was that Nigeria was going to be uh, part of that uh, solidarity trial. Yes. The only point of departure was when WHO said the uh, trial of hydroxychloroquine should be suspended. Yes. And, you know, the government came out and said Nigeria will continue with the trial of, uh, of uh, hydroxychloroquine. But it's good also to hear that there is now a ministerial advisory body of experts led by Professor Oyewale, uh, Oyewale Tomori, who is a distinguished virologist and who is uh, assisting, you know, uh, the uh, presidential task force in terms of getting the priorities right. Yes. Okay, if we just move on to another subject, the Punch newspaper revised budgets. Federal government gives National Assembly 27 billion naira for renovation. Courts held. UBE votes. Government slashes primary health care centers fund from 44.4 billion, 44 .4 billion naira to 25.5 billion naira. UBE, 111.7 billion naira slashed to 51.1 billion naira. Federal legislators raise oil benchmarks to $28 uh, dollar a barrel, reduce output. Excess crude account illegal, says reps. Now, I, Rotus uh, did a lot of uh, analysis on this uh, budget cut, but if we look at this headline, I don't know whether we are getting our priorities right. At this time, we are cutting a uh, healthcare budget by almost 50 percent. Unbelievable. And making available 27 billion for a renovation of the National Assembly that can wait for another year and the National Assembly building will not collapse. I find this completely unacceptable. It is shocking. It is irresponsible. And also the mention of the excess crude account. Like you were saying, Rotas talked a lot about the budget and debt servicing. If the excess crude account was as envisioned and had hit the $22 billion, rather than as it currently stands, which is now less than $17 million, we might not have to go cap in hand as often as we do. Illegal as it is, yes, it should go, we should adhere to um, the we must Constitution. Learn to save for the reading. Yes. That is yes. time tested we wouldn't wisdom. Need to, even as an individual, do we not do that? To we do, not Ruben, need to this go legislator seems to be more interested in what comes to the National Assembly. Yes. What the National Assembly can spend directly. Hence, they are talking about illegality of the excess crude account. It's completely unacceptable. Well, I think the, the, the point that should be further uh, stressed is the point you raised about the cutting of funding for health care, particularly primary health care. I mean, part of the conversation around the COVID-19 has been that across Africa, <clears throat> the kind of political choices uh, that our leaders have made with regard to the health sector uh, is one of the things we're facing now. And all of us are here. I uh, know, uh, you know, a uh, very important personality, as they are otherwise called, can travel abroad. And we're all paying the price for the failure of the health infrastructure system. 
the recommended ratio for funding of the health sector is about 15 percent of budget. Yes. And Nigeria has, in the last uh, how many years, not even met that budget. And to yeah. see that that is one area in which you are cutting, whereas primary health care, public health, these are areas of priority. This is nothing short of a disgrace. But, you know, yeah. the, the job has not been done yet. It's still a proposal. Well, I, I hope, hope that they will have will, a rethink. They will have a rethink. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank, Thank you. you very much, yeah. Manuel Ferrer.